good afternoon um, everyone for uh, um, uh, and thanks for taking time and joining us uh, for yet another edition of uh, lunch and learn uh, run for uh, the india user group which is indus uh, if you've been following me um, uh, you would know that um, we are trying to bring together and curate uh, all the different innovations that are happening in and around the sap ecosystem and as part of that uh, we've brought together sap experts who talked about uh, some of the innovations that they're working on we brought together um, sap customers who talk about their perspectives around digital transformation and their learnings we brought together authors consultants to talk about their perspectives from from a, a successful digital transformation um, perspective we had partners and sap startups uh, talk about how they are helping drive a specific solution for a specific problem that customers face when it comes to uh, digital transformation so uh, in the same uh, genre today uh, we have a partner with us uh, uh, in gentis and they will talk about uh, how they are actually helping uh, sap customers specifically customers of sap success factors uh, in a very specific way for solving a very specific problem so with that i'd like to hand it over to stefan and uh, stefan if i can ask you to quickly introduce yourself and take it away please okay thank you very much Yes, hello everyone. My name is uh, Stefan Kohler. I'm a partner manager at Ingentis Germany. So I'm responsible with uh, the team for our partnering, for our partners on a global level. Uh, we offer software and of course we like to uh, sell the software uh, on a global scale. And therefore we take the actions, all the actions with our partners, help them to establish our software uh, on their markets. Um, and I myself um, have a background in business uh, information systems. <clears throat> I'm with the company since two and a half years. And uh, yeah, my global, uh, yeah, my, my main task is you know, the partnering. You know, for example, in Australia, we have a big partner where I'm looking, uh, where I'm helping if there's anything. So I'm in the middle, I'm the middleman uh, helping all those guys uh, to establish uh, our software, especially the org manager. Today, I would like to give you an uh, overview of uh, the org manager for SAP success factors, which is one of our products. But first of all, before I go also into the live system, I would like to show you also the system into a, in a live state. I would like to give you an overview of our company Ingentis. So, uh, it's okay. Ingentis is a German based company. So we are, so we are launched, we were launched in 1997. Uh, since uh, 1999, basically, we are doing HR software for the German market and for the international market. So we have two parts. Um, the org manager, what I'm talking about today, is so the, in the, the, the software for the international market. And um, it started as an individual project, basically, uh, 25 years ago for, an, uh, for a company here in Germany. They wanted to have an org charting software, an automatic org charting, org charting and um, uh, the founders decided that this would be a good idea, a good solution uh, for a global market. And so uh, it established uh, on the market and is currently the org manager is uh, holds market leadership in the enterprise segment. Today, we have 90 plus employees on a global scale. So we have a company, we are located in Nuremberg, Germany. So it's in the south of, in the south of Germany. Um, but we also have uh, a company in the States for our American market. And we have some people sitting in different countries individually helping us to, uh, uh, yeah, to, to sell also in the software. Currently, we have 2,000 uh, customers on uh, globally, so it means not only for the org manager, but also for other software we offer for tax consulting business in Germany, for example. Um, up today, we have about uh, 1,700 uh, org manager customers globally. This means that we are we offer the org manager for um, <clears throat> for every industry and also every size of company. So we have small sized companies up to big uh, corporations. And as you can see in this slide, we have uh, we, we are uh, offering uh, the software for different industries like automotive in, um, 
industry, energy, financial services. And they're also, there are small ones and there are big ones. And the big ones, like, for example, BMW, you see on the right side hand side, also Volkswagen is using our software on a global level. And um, yeah, and again, also another, another slide with all the, the most famous uh, yeah, uh, customers. Our customers are very really restrictive. So this means because you, I think I was asked also to give her an example. Um, most of our customers don't like to, to of course we can name them, but uh, show something is uh, really difficult because also of data restrictions. Um, but of course we can name them. Uh, and one thing I have to add here is that these 1,700 uh, customers are basically based I would say 95, 90 to 95, the number is going down uh, based on our um, org manager on-prem. So we have different versions of our org manager, but the number of course is going down because more and more companies are coming and changing or switching from the on-premise to the cloud and also to success factors. So what areas are we offering? Uh, what areas of activity? Of course, there's the basic org chart. So this is the really the simplest, the simplest uh, task of our org manager: showing an org chart, showing a visualization of the org chart. Um, um, of course, we have more to offer. Uh, we also offer controlling and big data views. This means that you can see a lot of data in one spot. I will show that in a minute. And also, controlling means that we offer a lot of KPIs, so we can add to the data or we can control or we can calculate with the data what we get from success factors and then offer additional uh, additional knowledge of numbers and figures for the customer so this means this is an organizational and effectiveness analysis possible and um, uh, the end of the or the, the top of the of the uh, of the road is um the simulation this is what we see in the currently what we see is the most uh, needed task of our org manager um, a simulation capability so that the user or the company can decide who is sitting or what person or what um what part is sitting uh, where and how can we allocate those fte's uh, in the future so for example if there's a company who is like who is joining another company, usually the org manager is used for the simulation. And the simulation, so does the you see have scenarios, what you how would the structure look like in the future or at a certain level? Uh, this can then uh, lead, uh, this can then be exported and can be imported back into success factors. This is a really uh, one of the most important tasks currently of the org manager. So what are the benefits? Um, a lot of manual work is reduced because you have more time for more important tasks. Um, okay, you can increase your efficiency because you know where and who, who is sitting where. Uh, you can have a look in your, in your structure uh, from a really different angle because like I said, we offer this big data view. So in a circle, a circle kind of view, this is really nice. So you can see with one spot, for example, where are, uh, where is a missing space or where, is, where, where do we need people in the future? And you can show that with different colors, for example, and uh, also the size uh, shows the data. Of course, uh, you're, with these new insights, your staff can, or the staff can make uh, more informed decisions. And really also a lot of money is saved with all this data, with all this, uh, this doing with this org manager because you can design your structures really fast. One person can basically do this and uh, you don't need a, a lot of uh, big staff to, um, to get this done. So I said before the org manager, yeah, we have more versions and um, the org manager started with the on-premise version many years ago. So for all platforms and data sources. And then with more time and time, uh, more um, versions are were established. So for example, the SES uh, version is on the market and very well used. And we have um, the org manager for success factors. There's also another 
a little tool available called Business Rule Trigger. I won't no one want to get into details. It's about automating business rules when you make changes so that uh, a lot of um, uh, automatic changes are propagated to, uh, to lower or higher levels. In all versions, um, or all, uh, yeah, all versions of the org manager, we have uh, a division that we can divide the, the product. There is a, uh, the professional version available, and there's an enterprise version available. The professional version, version basically is the automatic org charting. The enterprise edition or version includes simulation. So that's what I said, just said, uh, planning your future staff. This is included in the so-called enterprise version. Of course, the pricing in here is different. On top of that, we offer different add-ons. So something what you would like to see on the screen, certain, like, like I said, this, this circle view, these are little add-ons what we offer then if the customer can, and the customer can decide, do I need this or don't, do I not need this? And then can uh, ask our consulting uh, to add this in the product or in, uh, in the pricing. The org manager for SAP SuccessFactors was launched in uh, 2015. Like I said, it was based on 25 years of experience because we started with the org manager a long time ago. It's a certified extension and endorsed app. Uh, so especially uh, SAP, it was honored by SAP to, uh, to being an endorsed app. It runs on the SAP technology platform. And it integrates with the employee profile and EC data. So this is a most the most important difference to the other versions, because the other versions usually we can uh, connect with every database. With the success factors uh, with version, we only connect to, uh, with EP and EC. And if you can always uh, have a look uh, uh, on the at the app SAP store, uh, you will find it um, when you search for Inc. and its org manager. What are the target groups um, uh, for the org manager? So first of all, of course, there are the HR departments and org design teams, because like I said, when you like to move someone, when you would like to set up a new team, uh, so you have these, uh, the org charting, and you can of course add or view any uh, reporting lines, what, everything what the data offers can be displayed. Like I said, you can use the simulation to plan future structures and you have an export functionality. Not only, uh, you can not only export everything into uh, an MDF file. So to, this file can be used then to later to be imported back into success factors. You can also, of course, uh, export everything into a CSV file and add it to another, uh, to another product. Of course, managers are one of the target groups. Uh, so, well, like I said, we can calculate with figures. So different key figures can be can be supportive, of course, for every manager. And um, anything can be visualized also in the org manager. So this is something what a manager uses, basically. And we have, like I said before, different uh, display options, like a sunburst chart, what I call, it's, this is the way it's called. The name is called uh, to afford easy overview of all your uh, personal data. And there's the employee itself. You have the, the charting or charts, what can be viewed. You can have an USU directory, for example, like a telephone list, also something what easily can easily be done with the org manager. And of course, uh, you can print and uh, export everything into a PDF file or, for example, in the PowerPoint. So the highlights, uh, how and now we get more a little more technical. So how is it done? Um, the org manager for SAP Success Factors is, um, yeah, is running on uh, the SAP Business Technology Platform. And the connection is done through uh, the so-called OData API. And so everything, what can be, and this is exactly what I, because we always get the, the question, what can be, what can be displayed? Basically everything what's in EC and everything uh, what's in EC, which is available through the OData API can be then later on displayed on the screen. So this is the most important uh, 
note today. Everything which is, it needs to be there and then it can be displayed. And uh, there are no limitations in terms of design. So it means boxes, UI, and the content which is displayed can be a designed, is designed first of all without any coding. So it's a standard product. So it's done with all, um, with it's all there. So it's only, it's only settings are done. But the look and feel can be different like the customer would like to see. So if it's rounded, circled, the coloring, the logo in the background, the color of the whole of the whole chart. So everything can be changed according to the needs and the UI of the customer. Also the printout, for example, also print out what's on the screen, what's on the paper can be designed. And like I said before, any object attribute and structure, including metrics and custom reporting lines can be displayed. So uh, of course, everybody thinks of org charts when we talk about the org manager, but we don't, we also offer more than only org charting. So for example, we have a customer who has a global customer who has a lot of board meetings. This was also, uh, and they came up to us and says, and asked us, could we do this with the org manager? And one of our consultants yeah, was sitting there for a couple of days and said, yes, it's possible. So if the data is there, it can be displayed. And then the, the chart doesn't look like a chart. It looks like a PowerPoint, uh, basically, on a global level with all board meetings, current times, dates, who is in the meeting, what are the topics, and so on. It's like an information system. So this is also the org manager. Anything can be nearly visualized, what is available in his team. Said it before, uh, it's also a visual, uh, visual HR controlling system. Um, you can for, yeah, formatting and also conditional formatting. So if there's a certain level, it can be blue. If it's this level, it can be green and so on. So we have uh, individual uh, availabilities to change the look and feel according to certain numbers and figures and facts. And at the end, of course, the simulation workforce modeling feature. So you can yeah, plan the future structure of your, of your, of your system, of your, uh, of your HR, really, really easy with a drag and drop functionality, and then can store everything and export everything and can import everything. On a technical level, uh, the org manager is available or is located in the business technology platform. And there's the connection done between the old data API. Um, this is the connection. The design, the content, and the features are uh, a little bit different. So we have the customer on the one hand side who's telling us how should the design look like what should be displayed, what should be the KPIs so or the, the calculations, what should be the features. This is something what we get from the customer and uh, from SAP success factors, we get from Employee Central, we get the objects, the attributes and the relations. And then everything is configured, like I said before, without any coding. And in the end, it looks like this. Uh, it's integrated into success factors through the tile at the, at the starting, uh, at the home uh, screen. And then you can have it where you can, you will see the screen uh, filled out like you see here in this, those examples. And examples could look like this. So we have, like I said, an unlimited org chart design option. So this is just an example, not, a, I, I'm repeating myself. There is no one, there's not one customer where the org charts look the same as the other one. If you are going for the individual approach and here we have something new, you can go from scratch you can tell our consultants what you would like to see on the screen and they would uh, configure everything in so-called perspectives or different data views um, with the design you would like to see. Uh, but with, um, yeah, some customers of course came up said, okay, the hours of course, oh, takes a lot of hours. Don't you have anything like a template, uh, what we can use and maybe then just adjust the color or the, the logo. And this is something what we offer also since this year, uh, we offer a template um, approach. So this means we have a set of templates in a catalog and the customer can um, 
can um, yeah, decide which kind of uh, template they would like to use in the future and simply can, if they have the data available, uh, can set up these, these templates. We can set up these templates in a very, very uh, fast um, time. So within, I would say weeks or a week, some say within days, or within hours, but I always say, okay, within uh, some, let's say within a week, if the data is available, uh, something like this, you, you just see a screen can be set up really fast. So now I would like to um, jump into the program. So uh, let me just switch. Let's see how I stop the sharing here and uh, go over to this part. So um, I hope it's okay for you. I just switched to another screen. I need to switch to my monitor on the uh, side. Can't and see if, anything. We only see uh, you, Stefan. Yes. There's nothing being shared. I will just share my screen. Just hold on. So, share the screen. So now you should see my other screen. Yes. Okay. Very good. Can you just zoom a little bit because it's too small for people to yeah, actually. Yeah, I will zoom in a little yeah. bit. Just hold on. Uh, just stop the video here from my side because I always look to the right side. Okay, I will zoom in a little bit. Okay, uh, it's yeah, my laptop screen. Uh, let me do this because on my big screen, unfortunately, the when I click on something, it doesn't, uh, when I have boxes pop up, they are not shown in the big screen. Okay, now what you see is the org manager in a simple standard version. Just to give you an overview of how it looks like. Um, or what you see again, what you see on the screen is um, can be changed, can be adjusted according to the needs. So first of all, the most important is here, the, the, here this line here on top here, this menu, we have the so-called perspectives. Perspectives are basically the data views the customer is choosing or the customer would like to have um, would like to have in their company. So we have different overviews. We have different, yeah, yeah, metrics. We can, of course, show the organizational structure. We can also show a position structure. So there are different possibilities. It could also be that, for example, a manager sees more, has more perspectives than, for example, the individual employee. Of course, this is always possible. Um, so uh, in this view, now I'm starting here with the organization overview. We have, of course, a language change. Uh, so when you have different, when you have a company in different uh, locations, you could also have different languages adjusted or entered. We offer here, I think, up to 17 or 16 languages currently. We have a level. So this means now we uh, level a change. This means we have uh, the possibility here to change the levels. I can see now one level. Also, here we only have five levels. It can be done to 100 levels if you like. Of course, it's not viewable anymore. Even when I go on two levels in the screen, uh, I, it's still possible. If I go on three levels, uh, the, view, uh, the, the possibility to view everything, everything very good is not that, that good anymore. Um, we have the possibility to print and export, something I will show in a second. And uh, in the org manager for success factors, we can also change the date. So we the date for the data, what we see on the screen. So if there are uh, everything, the changes of course should be done, uh, usually the standard change should be done in success factors, but we can also import or um, yeah, change the date for uh, what is for this, the org chart what we see on the screen. Effects something uh, what we call visualization rules. Basically, these are filters. These filters can be set up or are set up according to the needs of the customer. So what we see here is just a simple example. 
also something like this I will show you in a second. And the other stuff I will go into, I will show it to you also in a couple of minutes. So what we have on the left hand side is a hierarchy tree. So basically you can go through a hierarchy tree or you can simply click on the individual uh, fields or boxes here I see on the screen. Of course, you have here the organizational overview from a business level down to an individual uh, department level and so on. So for example, I click here on corporate executive and I see here my best run corporation. This is always the example corporation what we use to show. Okay, so you see here, of course, also photos are not, be, not a big deal, can be included, rounded, circles, uh, uh, squared. This is also something what we, what we uh, can set in, in, the, in the implementation phase. Now, um, I see here, for example, uh, when I click here on a, or when I go over with the mouse on a person, I see here this heart symbol. So when I click here on this heart symbol, I don't do it right now, I would jump directly into the individual page on success factors of here, Roberto Benavides. So this is the connection is still there. You are currently in success factors. You just don't see it because of the frame. It's just, you are currently connected. I'm in here also as a, I have here, I think my name is Alicia or something as a certain user. So I'm based on my user credentials. I see some, what I see on the screen is based on my user credentials. So when I click, for example, on a person, I now move this again from the right-hand side more into the space. I see a little business card. Uh, let's see a little business card of data of Roberto. So if I click on another person, it would change immediately. And you have some data available for this person. What you see here is based also on the, on the user rights and the data available. So for example, here you see a pay grade or something like this. All this is something that needs to be, needs to be included in EC. What I also see is uh, the reporting line. So for example, the, the HR manager of uh, Roberto Benavides is a Mauricio Sanchez. And simply here by clicking on this little icon, I jump into the chart and see Mauricio Sanchez. Sorry. Now again, also when I click on, on, on this on his, uh, a little, on, on his name, I see in the right hand side, this business uh, card for him. And I can also switch back now to, again, to uh, Roberto Benavides. Um, what you see, uh, like I said, what you see in the screen can is configurable. So um, this business uh, card can also, for example, be shown when I hover over a person, not a big deal, can be just uh, implemented. It's not a, it's nothing, it's just a setting. So what you see also here, um, the setting on the left hand side can be static can be can also be um, can be here on the side just with a click that it opens so everything is here individually set um, configurable now when i um now let's go more into the visualization um, so when i get onto my effects and for example what i could do i could show here um oh, this is the wrong one sorry one effects there you go no so I, for example, can hide employees. I could also, for example, um, let's move this on the left-hand side, I could show some KPIs. So showing KPIs on top, below, wherever you would like to see it is possible. So for example, here, uh, FTEs, vacant positions, and so on. Also with a little graph. So um, overview of male and female, for example, if this is needed, can be done. Now, let's say I would like to, or the head of the, apart, the department could also be, for example, displayed. Now, if I would like to see my vacant positions, for example, <clears throat> yeah, click here, and you see the vacant positions are added to every every uh, yeah every team here. So this is not not too viewable anymore. Let's say okay, I would like to see hide my employees so that I see more. I can, of course, see this uh, this um, vacant positions in within the chart. But and now let's assume I would like to see I would like to see more. So I could go expand this to two levels, and of course, yeah, here make this a little smaller, and go down. And I see, okay, where do I have vacant positions? Okay, 
it's possible to view those vacant positions, but it's not, well, let's, it's not very comfortable. Let's say it is, let's say it this way. So therefore, um, we could also go for something different. And that's exactly what I would like to show you and what I told you before. We have, it says here, view sunburst. We have here this sunburst view. So when I hit here, click here on sunburst view, I see my <clears throat> company in a circle view with a cord with uh, currently three levels. Could also here change this levels, these levels to more. <clears throat> and um, all in gray and also depending, I think uh, depend the size here now is depending, I think on the on the HR number of, of persons in the in the department currently. So also the the num the, the change here, uh, the, the size here of each segment can be changed according to a certain figure. And uh, now I also use this uh, effects here, this visualization rules. And for example, um, click here on vacant positions. Now I see with one view where my company in my best run corporations do I have making positions. And by simply here clicking here with a double click, going into the detail, I see where exactly in my, uh, in my um, here operations or uh, Australia team, I have making positions. And of course I can now go into the org chart and see where it is. I also have the possibility always to sorry for my screen, to add it somewhere here on the screen in parallel. Oh, yeah, it's, it's there, it's there. I think it's, I think it's here just to hide it. No, there you go, okay. So, um, sorry, this is, this is now uh, because of my, of my small screen, but I, you can always have it in parallel on the screen and see where do I have waking positions and have the org chart next to it. One example, how the org manager <clears throat> looks like and how something can be, uh, can be viewed. Uh, in my next um, example, I will go one step lower. Let's just look on the hour, so, okay. Just to give you an overview what's also possible, it's matrix and retirement view. Basically here you see, we have the visualization rules on the right-hand side. So they are static now, not with a mouse click open to be opened. We have the tree view here. Yeah, in a, in a, in a, on the left-hand side, just can be open with a mouse click. I just keep it like this. And we have the org charting bigger on the screen. Now what I'm doing, I again, go into my executive office, into my leadership team, uh, into my best friend corporation. And you see here, for example, these little figures here, these KPIs are a little different. They are colored, they are underneath uh, the header. So also something what can be configured. And now what the org manager can do, for example, is to set up a, we can set up a retirement view. Could look like this. So you can see with one, with one view, who is a little bit eligible to retire within the next year, within the next two years, three years, up to five years and so on. And with different color codings, you see the persons, um, where are they currently, what are they, uh, in terms of the color view coding, you see when are they going to retire. So something like this can also be displayed. And also in this uh, view, you have the possibility to set a filter, for example, who is uh, retiring within the next, uh, let's say five years, or eight years, and you see the persons underneath with the with the individual color coding and the years to retire. Also possible, for example, is a dashboard, just a simple dashboard, just to give you an example that we also offer something like this, if this is needed, and of course it can change according to different uh, to different retirement views. Also something possible in the org manager. Okay, now because of time, um, coming to my last uh, thing I would like to show you here is the position. Is there a question? No, please go on. No, okay. Um, is the position and metric and simulation. Something I told you before, uh, oh, sorry, no, this was for us, is the compensation model, sorry, this one. So, like I said before, we a lot of our customers would like to have the simulation capability. 
because of planning new structures. And uh, yeah, for example, if they would like to split their company or something like this, or if they would like to set up a new uh, department, something like this, they need or they are loving this tool or loving this uh, capability. So what you see here on the screen, now here we have <laughs> again something to show you have here these visualization rules with a drop down menu just to see what is possible. What I'm doing here is now I go into the simulation, first of all, and um, start a simulation. So um, first of all, I need to create a simulation, give it a name. Let's see, P2 it takes a little bit. Uh, and now it's loading. And you see this also here underneath, there's a little line in gray. I already said it just takes a minute, but just to save time, I already made one before. So it looks like this, the way it's ready. You can share the simulation with other people, means that you can say, okay, Mohit Kumar, my colleague, can also see the simulation, can also work with the simulation, and can also ch uh, make changes in the simulation. Um, I can, yeah copy it, of course, and I can also see um, um, what was done in a simulation. Currently, it's like a simulation log. Currently, there's nothing, you can nothing see there because nothing was done here. So now I have my, my simulations ready. It shows me down here a little uh, overview. So I double click and, oh, sorry, I open here, get back to my screen. Now, what was happening is that data was copied in a sandbox environment. And what you see on the screen currently is not the live data, it's just a copy. And uh, what I'm doing right now here, I double click here again, again into my um, executive office, into my best run corporation. Now you see a different view without any pictures, of course, just, uh, just the teams. And uh, in order to start my simulation, nothing is different right now. In order to start, I click here, here on top, enable simulation. And now when I hover over uh, those all those uh, details, you see little icons. So you can either uh, edit, delete, uh, create a new department here in this case, or create a new position. I you can simply also jump again up and up and down like before. And for the first thing I would like to show you is, for example, I see that a leadership team, a Czech Republic, is on the same level like my best run corporation. This is something I'd like to change. So, for example, I move simply this uh, box here onto the best run corporation. So, what you see then, it disappears. And with a double click, you see, I make it a little bit bigger that it was added into the, underneath the level of the best run corporation next to the other leadership team. So I moved a complete team underneath the best run corporation. And it's displayed in blue showing me, okay, there was a change made. Another thing I can do, for example, I could move um, or I could set up a new, um, let's say position. Let's say here operations, maintenance, use A. Let's say I would like to set up here a new position. Or let's do it this way. I, um, let's see here, do it this way. Yeah. So let's say I would set, like to set up a new position within the leadership team in here. So what I'm doing here, I simply go down here and say new, create new position. Now I get a, a overview. What would I need to enter for a new position? Also, this is configurable. Uh, so the description, let's say assistant. Business unit, anything else there, I just leave it like it is and hit save. And you see now colored in green that there's a new position uh, in the leadership team in EMEA. Um, I'm even capable of moving an individual person, okay? Let's uh, assume that here, this lady here from Russia is moving to this uh, leadership team EMEA. So I simply also can drag and drop her, not the position, but also the individual person onto this uh, position, this new position. She disappears here. 
and appears here again in blue because this was a change. Just to show you what is capable, what is possible, I will then here now, because she's not available there in Russia, I will just simply delete her. So click on the trash can. And now she's disappearing. But these were just some minor changes, some bigger changes, just to give you an impression what is possible. Now, when I hit again here on top, my enable simulation mode and go back into my overview. And now I'm into this line of my simulation. First of all, I can see uh, what was done. So I have a log and you see who was doing something into this in the simulation. And then I can create a so-called comparison. So this means that I create a comparison of the things I made now in the simulation with the real life data. Also, this takes some time and when it's ready, it shows me and then I open it. And now I see what new objects I have added, what objects were changed, and which kind of objects were deleted, 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 sorry. So all three of them are displayed in this list. And now they can be exported into a CSV file, but also down to a position level, you can always have an MDF export. The question always here is, is there a workflow behind? No, because uh, there are a lot of workflow systems uh, in the companies like ServiceNow, for example. And so what we offer here is an MDF export down to a position level. This means all the changes what I made down to a position are exported into a MDF file and can then be imported back into the live system. It's exactly in the format uh, SuccessFactors is using it, can be imported back into SuccessFactors by an administrator. So for example, you export, make an export. It is checked by a management team they say, okay, for a certain time, this change is fine. This is okay. Green light, go for it. And then the MDF export can be used by an administrator to be imported. I made also a change using a person, moving a person. For this, I need a special export, so-called employee export. Also here, file is saved or exported. And this also can be used as file to be imported back into the live system. Yeah, this was in a very fast way to show the, um, the uh, simulation. And um, one thing I would, I think I forgot it is the print capability. Oh, this is something I'd like to show because I think this is also a very, also a very well uh, used um, functionality. So for example, if we have here our best run corporation, we offer always the print into a, a PNG file, but we all have a really nice tool for printing. So this means we can either print this as a PDF file or into a PowerPoint. We get an overview and then we have see what is currently done. It's currently printing. And then when it's done and it's ready, you get, uh, you get a short notice that it can be downloaded. There you go. Download. Open it. Just need to move it from my other page. There you go. And you have a complete PowerPoint file and also can be edited. Can be, you can edit it uh, so everything can be changed. It's not just a simple plain picture. It's also individual can be changed. Individually can be changed. But what is also possible is a print job, so a batch print. So this is something also very nice. So you can, for example, go for a, let's assume we go into our executive office again, Best Run Corporation, and we can add uh, all the child notes. And I hit print. Also here, you get to the overview. And um, this takes a little bit longer, I think, because I hit it now I said all the child nuts. So this means now what is, what is done is a PDF file with a table of contents. And um, 
the, con the table of contents is also linked to the individual pages. Um, and so also the sign and look and feel what you see can again be uh, changed according to the needs. So it's just printing, it takes a little bit, just close this. There you go, there it is, download. And you see here uh, an overview page and it's linked to the individual pages. So here I have my best run corporation. And of course, depending on the size, uh, you can jump into directly into the individual pages. And also here I have, again, the possibility to jump up and down with a double click. Also something very special and something very needed or a lot of times used in companies. Okay, um, so this was, I think, my major, I think, in running out of time. Of course, we have, like I said, this is the standard, uh, this is the ten, these are the standard charts. We offer the possibility of uh, templates. If you are interested more into this uh, template, uh, just send me an email. I can always send you the overview and the catalog, how it looks like and uh, what is offered. Okay. Now I will stop my sharing and uh, if there are any questions, please, I cannot hear you. You are unmuted. So before you stop sharing, uh, you also oh. mentioned about a sunburst uh, view, right? So could you just show that view once? Yes, I can show. yes, yes. Uh, let me just share my screen again. There you go. The sunburst is exactly what I said is this view. This is called the sunburst view, um, mm -hmm. where you have on one spot, for example, let me just ex expand this to four levels. Of course, in my screen, this doesn't look too good. Let's go on for three levels. And you can, um, for example, then have here effects in this example, I only have the vacant positions. So this means what you see here on the screen in where in my, in my company do I have vacant positions? I see with one spot, could be more, of course, there could be other colors for other, uh, for other rules. And then in parallel, you would have uh, different colors in the sunburst view and see where or what, where do I have um, this rule? And then with a double click, you can jump right into the system, right, jump right into the into this uh, department. Nice, this is really nice. I've not yeah. seen a view like this before from an org structure perspective. So very nice. Thank and you so much. This is, you're welcome. And this is exactly also one of the major features what uh, big corporations use, of course, which, uh, big big uh, HR corporation. Uh, corporations, uh, HR departments of big corporations, sorry, uh, because they have a view really of their certain of certain parts of their company with one view and can decide upon this view, yeah, depending, of course, what they need. Super. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, let, so let me let me get my camera back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, thank you so much for taking us through the entire uh, demo. Uh, a few questions that typically pops up whenever we have a partner delivering their sessions, right? So first one is, how is the product license? Is it user-based? Is it uh, how, what is the metric based on which you're licensing it? It is based on the visualized data. It means usually these are the employees or the positions, depending here, the higher number counts. So depending, usually we get, uh, we get a call and say, okay, we have a company with a thousand people, um, then we usually ask, are there more positions or, or, or employees? Is it usually employees? And then it's we go for the thousand employees. So we have different price ranges starting from zero, zero to 500, 500,000, and so on. And depending on the, depending on the, yeah, what we request, we give out these prices it's on a monthly based, uh, usually five years of course, can be always discussed. And uh, then we have, this is the monthly the monthly part. And then we have implementation days. Like I said, okay, this, if, it's, if it's from scratch, it's more hours. If it's uh, 
the template approach. Currently here we have a, a ramp up fee of 2,650 euros. So these are the for three data views for three perspectives, what a customer can choose from the catalog. And uh, with also some minor changes. And from there, usually we, we tell the customer, please calculate with, let's say uh, we have, we have uh, calculate, we have uh, consulting packages, 10 hours, 20 hours, please calculate with 20 more hours depending on your needs. And then usually can we can go on from this, uh, yeah, from this implementation with, let's say, with an individual uh, view or with an add-on, what you, what you need. And like I said, the add-ons are, it's also depending usually on the customer. When a customer approaches us and says, okay, I have this environment, I would like to have, for example, um, so only certain people should only see certain parts, Depending on the requirements, then our consulting team sits together with the customer and says, okay, this would go be the enterprise edition with this add-on because you are in, for example, you would like to see the um, you would like to see a sunburst view. Okay, the sunburst view is also a little add-on, and then depending on this, the price gets together. Interesting. And you mentioned about implementation, right? So that leads to the next question. How long does it take for a customer to actually go live once they've made the decision and made the purchase? Okay, with the, like I said, with the template approach, if we go, it and the data is there, it could be done within days or let's say a week, I will say a week or two weeks, make it simple. If it's the implementation, if it's the, from scratch, usually we have a lead time of four to six weeks, and then usually it takes up to 12 weeks altogether, then everything is set up. So what do you mean by if the data is there? So I'm assuming that all of these are, so when you say if the data is there, right? Yeah. So I'm assuming that uh, anyone who will reach out to you is already a success factors customer. So I, I'm assuming you already have the data. Yeah. So which means this one is, exactly. is a good line. Yes. And certain objects need to be there or certain objects need to be filled and need to be available. But it's something what the customer, what uh, the content selling team is checking with the customer on, a, on a, in, in a meeting. They can tell them exactly, okay, we need this and we that that point, for example, and something here is missing. And then if it's set up, also this is done usually very pretty fast if an is an existing XC customer. And like I said, most of this is really there. And uh, because this is also the template approach is used with the with a very minimum of data and amount. So usually every every PC customer usually has this available. Cool. And uh, uh, the other question is, I, I heard you say that you, know, you do the implementation as well. So I'm assuming that you, your team does the implementation and there are no separate partners involved. Yeah, uh, success factors currently, we in Germany do the implementation. Uh, so our consulting team is doing this in Germany. Um, for the on-premise version, like I said before, we have the on-premise version. Uh, you had the back office, the, the back, the software for setting it up, it's the same basically for success factors, but uh, for success factors, we have, we do it um, because it's a little more tricky. Uh, and because we also saw in the on-premise world, a lot of customers got this, the training and then usually you do a setup with a certain amount of uh, perspectives and you use that for years. And then after, let's say of one year, they would like to have another perspective and usually the training is gone because you don't do it all the time. We only have some customers who are doing it really in the on-premise world, really, really good and read it in, um, uh, on a regular basis. But again, for the success factors version, everything is done, configured in Germany and done. Uh, if there are changes, usually customer has a uh, um, consulting package it's a call, it's an email. I will all say within hours or let's say days, a change is done. Yeah, or if some, of course it's bigger, it's a, if it's a bigger um, change, of course it takes a little longer, but if somebody says, okay, I need another field there or another color there, it's really fun. It's, re it's really fast. Interesting. Uh, one question regarding the functionality itself. So when you moved into the simulation view, uh, uh, is there a possibility to also look at the cost perspective in terms of uh, salary and uh, the cost perspective view? Yes. Salary the, and uh, cost. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
as far as I have seen different uh, examples, you can also always have the changes. What are what are the changes? For example, for salary here and the department there, then you have a little um, chart on the left hand side, for example, established, and then you see directly when something is changing that how is the change re reflected? Yes. Okay, so the budgeting and the cost implications are available. Um, maybe one uh, final question before we kind of conclude because we are already on top of the hour. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to find out more information or want to reach out to you, uh, how can they find out, where can they find out more information and how can they reach out to you? It's always available on ingendis.com. So there is a lot of information and you can always reach out to me and I would be happy to uh, give you all. Can you just share your email ID so that you uh, can share my you. email address? Yes, okay. of course. Okay, super. So thank you so much, uh, Stefan, for taking us through the uh, presentation. I think uh, the Sunburst view is something that will stay with me for a long time now. Um, <laughs> all the very best and thanks for taking time and sharing about your product. You're welcome. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, going. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.